Hi and welcome to Geeks for Kids. In this video, we would be discussing the solution of the problem NCR mod M. Now, in this problem, you are given three integers N, R, and M, and your task is to calculate NCR modulo M itself. M is a square free number and the largest prime factor of M less than 50 itself. Okay. So now let us first discuss what is NCR all about. NCR is nothing but N choose R where the, there are the ways of selecting R items from N without any, uh, without any consideration of the order itself. That is without the permutation itself. And the formula to this is N factorial divided by n minus r factorial divided by r factorial itself. Okay, fair enough. So now we move forward and we see n, c, r and m. So as this is the factorial thing and we would calculate and then find the modulo m itself and the factorial would cause a overflow of integer. That's why even before implementing we can see that yes, this is not possible itself. Now, the next way it can be made possible is by using the observation of NCR. What is this all about? So let us first discuss 0, C0 and 0. So if we write C0 and 0, that is 1 itself. Okay. Now, if we have 1, C0, then we have 1, C1. Because more than select five items out of four items, there is no possibility. So we would just ignore this condition. So in this scenario, this is nothing but again one and again one. Now in the next scenario, we have two C zero and then two C one and then we have two C two. And in this scenario, we have like this and this value is two itself. Then we have three C zero. Then we have three C one. Then we have 3C2 and then we have 3C3 itself. Then in this scenario, we have 1, we have 1 and we have 1. We have 3C1 is equal to 3 and this is also 3 itself. Now, in this way only, we need to calculate till the value 4 to have a better observation of something. I would tell you what it is all about. 4C0, then we have 4C1 and then we have 4C2. Then we have 4C3 and then we have 4C4 itself. In this, we have 1, then we have 4, we have 6 and we have 4 and we have 1 itself. So now, this is it all about. Now, if we start removing, now if we start removing this, okay, now let us just remove this and you would see a pattern in this. Okay, so now, you would see a pattern that this first number is 1, the next number is again 1, 1. And the first and the last number is 1. And the middle numbers, okay, is the addition of upper two numbers. That is 1 plus 1, 2. Then first and last number is 1. And this number 3 is 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. Then 2 plus 1, 3. Then 1 plus 3, 4. 3 plus 3, 6. And 3 plus 1, 4. So this is nothing but Pascal's triangle. So in this, we can say that we can have the formula that C, N and R is nothing but C of N minus 1 and R minus 1 and then added to C of N minus 1 and then R itself. This number and this number itself. Fair enough? We now understood this. Now let us move forward. If, if n of this is this is what p c zero. So if n of zero or this is what three c three or c n and n, then in both two condition this is equal to one. So now we have built up a recurrence one. So now what we can do is we can use this recurrence formula and we can formulate it. So now as now as this is not the question and this is not the intended solution, 
but this is the part of the solution. So we would be coding this in the local setup. And then I would be showing you in the GFG ID when we will be implementing it. So now suppose we want NCR. So int NCR and then we have the N and the R itself. Then we can say that if N is equal to equal to R, okay, or the second condition that r is equals to equals to zero. Then in both these scenarios, we would return one. Else we would initialize the value known as answer. And it is nothing but equal to rec of n minus one and r minus one added to rec of n and n minus one and r itself. Then we need to just return the answer itself. Fair enough? This is what we can do. So I would just name it red because I'm more accustomed to it. Okay, this is calculating the value of NCR. Now, as this is an overlapping sub problem, if you just draw the recursion tree, then you would find that it is overlapping sub problem. Then what we can see is the values, the values of the parameters which are dynamic. The dynamic parameters are N and R. So what you can do is you can declare a DP of N and R. And if you want the indexes of those, what you can do is n plus 1 and r plus 1. And then you can initialize it using memset. Okay. Memset of dp of minus 1 comma size of dp itself. After that, what you can do is just before the computation, you would check that if dp of n and r is not equal to minus 1, then return that dp of n and r itself. Else, what we would do is just before returning the answer, dp of n and r is equal to the answer itself. Now, this is nothing but n multiplied with r itself. Fair enough, we have this. Now, the next thing what we can do is, we can see that basically, we just need to have n minus 1 and r minus 1. So, what we can do is, we can build up the array not of 2d, but only a 1d array of R and we can implement this. Okay. This small part would be a homework, but I've just showed you, okay, what this is all about. So you can do this by using this kind of scenario. Like you would have an array this big, this big array, and then you would have all these elements as zero itself. All these elements are zero. So other elements needs to be filled in the array would be zero. And then what you can do is you can assign the first value as one and the next value as one plus zero is equals to zero, one plus zero and then one plus zero is equals to one. This is how you can do it. These all one value can also be given by the values above by using the value zero. Why zero only? Because it won't contribute anything to the answer and it won't modify the original answer. So this small implementation would be a homework for you. Okay. So now we know the dynamic programming approach for finding the NCR. Now let us move back to the question and you would see. Now, if you move back to the, now, if you move back to the question, then the time complexity of our solution is order of N R itself. So now in this way, we can find that here R is still 10 to the power nine and an array of 10 to the power nine is not feasible. And even if we do n into r, it is not feasible now itself. This is the scenario. So now what we need to do is we need to think of something small. Now we can see that the value of m is small enough. That is why when the value of m is small enough and the n and r is very large, we need to think of something known as Lucas theorem. So in Lucas theorem, it states that for non-negative integers n and r and a prime p, the following congruency holds true. What the multiplication from i is equals to 0 to k, ni and ri mod p will give us the answer of n and r. Now, what is this ni and ri all about? ni and ri is all about this value that is base p. So you can just find it base p and the remaining digits and the remaining digits can be found out by using the dynamic programming approach. So that is why this question is build on top of Lucas theorem, but a some part of it needs to be calculated using the DP approach of NCR. That is why I had to give you this. Okay. Fair enough. 
So now what we would do is we would use the same formulated thing in the coding itself. We would take out the last digits by using modulo P and then whatever is remaining, we would add that value by taking out from that value. Okay. Now one more, now one more scenario is that I have already written the dynamic programming approach pre-written and I would only implement the Lucas theorem because that is our main focus here. Because in the set one, the dynamic programming approach is to be discussed. Okay, so implementation would be discussed in that video. I have explained you the whole idea. Only then this implementation is left and the implementation of Lucas theorem would be concentrated more on here. Okay, so now let us start with the implementation itself. Now, let me first go through the code that is already written. Okay. So here we are finding the NCR mod by using the Pascal's triangle. I'm using the value of zero. Then using the same values mean of I and R. Why I and R? Because if you observe the Pascal triangle, then the values which are greater than R would have the same value. That is why there is no point in evaluating that value. Rather, we would be using that value itself. Okay. Now, what is the CRT method? CRT method, we are not using Chinese remainder theorem, but the idea of Chinese remainder theorem is used here not the whole Chinese remainder theorem, okay? The name idea to solve CRT, uh, main idea of solving that modular thing, CRT is done here. Why? Because we are trying to find that all values, all values evolve to the remainder or not. So we are just trying to do the naive method that we have taken out all the factors and we are trying to find a value which would give us the remainder one. And then we are starting off with zero, then we are incrementing to one, and then if the value is not equal to remainder, we would simply evaluate. Then again, we are going to one. And at the end, if at the end also, this found remains true. After this also, the found remains true, then we would be returning it. Else we would keep incrementing and keep checking that all these values are returning the same remainder that is given or not. The same thing. Okay, if you go and read the article of Chinese remainder theorem, and you would find the question that is given here, the main agenda to have used Chinese remainder theorem, the need of it, then you would find the naive algorithm like this one. And then to solve it more efficiently, we use Chinese, Chinese remainder theorem. Okay. So now here we are finding all the prime factors that we are having. Okay. So if the factor is zero, we are pushing it and then we are dividing it. Okay. And then we are again moving forward and then we are again dividing it. At the end, we are having value not equal to one. And we are again pushing it. This is what we are doing. So now let us move back to the Lucas theorem and then we would start implementing it. So we would use our upper function here. So what we would do is first let us build up this. So int Lucas, we would write this. Then we would have int n and then int r and then int p itself. We have this. Now if r is equals to equals to zero, okay, that means we can choose no values. That means there is only one value, that is we can choose no values. Fair enough? Then ni, okay, we would find the last value as I told, we would find the last digit that is remaining. So ni is equal to n modulo p and then ri, the last modulo, the same thing, r modulo p itself. And then what we would do is we would first find the initial value with the Lucas theorem and then the last value with ncr mod p itself, okay. So what we would do is we would go to return and then we would go to Lucas theorem and then we would go to n divided by p, okay, and then r divided by p, whatever value is remaining, and then we would multiply it with the given value of the r. So I would just copy this. Okay, ncr mod p and then ni, okay, the value of ni, and then ri, and then p, and then whole modulo p, whatever the value is coming out we would have the modulo p. We would return that. Next, we have this one to call the Lucas theorem. This is what we need to do. So what we would do is we would simply const auto primes is equal to find prime. Okay? Just find out all the primes. So find prime factors. Okay. And then we have the value of m. So we will find all the prime factors of m itself. Then what we would do is we would have vector of and then we have int of rem. Okay, whatever the values are remaining itself. Then we have for 
auto c amount primes okay and then what we will do is run the push the run dot push pass and then we have n c r c n So we would have Lucas. We would have Lucas, and then we have N, and then we have R, then we have U. Then we would close this. Next, we would come down, and we would say return, return, find by C R T, and find by C R T. And then the primes that is remaining and the remainder. So we are having the remainder and the primes. So we would get the value that is giving us the remainder on the voting. Okay, so let us just compile it down and see if we can get a correct answer for sample test case. Okay, we are getting a correct order for the sample test case. Now let us submit this and see if we can get an AC or not. And yes, we got an AC. That's it for today. Thank you and have a nice day.